a nivel internacional, donde se recuerda hay un programa que se llama de IPVC Ready Logo, donde certifican los equipos que tienen cierto grado de soporte de, de IPv6. Entonces, él nos va a hablar de, ese, de su laboratorio. Ok, eh, Timothy Winters, can you hear me? Hi, guys, yes. uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, okay, thank you. So, you wish you can start, okay? Thank you for, okay. for, for presenting, even though it is remotely. Next time, yes. we hope you can join us, okay? Yes, I apologize. Uh, flights in the U.S., uh, we had some trouble yesterday, and so I wasn't able to make it. But thank you for this opportunity to present to everybody remotely. Okay. Um, today, I'm presenting on the IPv6 Ready logo and how it aids um, in IPv6 deployment. So I'm going to start, start the presentation off talking a little bit about the IPv6 Ready program and what it is and how it works. And then I'll go into um, how it can be used to aid in v6 deployments in areas um, such as Latin America. So the IPv6 forum is a global forum that has many different chapters in many different areas that promote um, IPv6 and the deployment of it. The IPv6 Ready logo is a small committee of basically labs that got together and wanted to create one marketing logo for products to be able to demonstrate that they um, have v6 compliance. So the committee has a structure as listed here. There's Latif, the president of the v6 forum, um, Asaki from Japan, he is a professor there, Erica Johnson from the UNH IOL, and then myself, I'm the technical chair that oversees all of the technical, and then we have different regional officers um, that sit underneath me that work on each individual region. So that's sort of the structure of the uh, actual program. The Ready Logo program is a marketing program that allows uh, the testing of RF, IETF RFCs for IPv6. Um, we have several different ones, and I'm going to talk about them in a little bit, but um, one key component of the program is it requires both interoperability and conformance demonstration to get the logo. So any device that has a logo has gone through conformance testing, which for us means that you test against the test tool, just the device by itself. And then what's sort of unique about this program is it also requires interoperability. Um, it requires that the device be plugged into other devices to make sure that it will work, um, in particular on a real network instead of just not in a lab. Um, we also have many different logos, as you can see listed here. Um, we have the, the most popular one is the IPv6 Core logo, uh, which has been around since the early 2000s, and that one basically demonstrates a core protocol working. We also have um, IPsec for security. Uh, We have DHCP, we also have um, CE Router, which is our newest logo, which I'll talk about a little bit more in a moment. Um, I mentioned the approved labs earlier. The IPv6 Ready program has labs all over the world. Um, any lab can join and participate as part of this. Um, there's a process for becoming a lab, but it ultimately really will, what it is is the labs donate time, not just to the testing, but also creating of test specs, working with customers, Um, reviewing documents to make sure that anything the logo committee puts out um, works correctly. The logo process is actually um, fairly straightforward. A company can test or they can go to an approved lab to test. We do have lots of people, those labs often have customers come in that want to test with them. Um, in particular for the interoperability portion, um, a lot of people don't have test beds or labs that can support them running the testing themselves for interoperability, so they go to an individual lab to have their testing done. Um, whether they do it self-testing or go to an approved lab, um, there's a 100%, uh, you must pass every test case and there's an online application. You can basically get your results, whether it's from a lab or self-test, you can apply. Um, once they get into the application process, the regional officers um, basically review the application to make sure everything's right and there's no issues. And then we, uh, we can approve it and put it online. So a company can do this entirely on themselves. Anyone manufacturing an IPv6 product can totally do this on themselves. They can also, um, a lot of the customers outsource it to labs to do it entirely for them um, to do it. But we support both processes. Um, you have a choice, as I mentioned. Um, the results must be 100% pass for both conformance and interoperability. There are, are some advanced functionalities that we consider that are clearly marked out in the document. but. Basically, you have to test every test case that we have. Um, I mentioned earlier, 
all those RFCs, we go through and test the must and shoulds in them for compliance. Um, there are some cases where we will make shoulds advance functionality where it makes sense. Um, there are other places where if it breaks interoperability, we require it. There are some shoulds that are optimizations that the uh, individual logos won't require. A big component I mentioned earlier was the interoperability testing. Um, we require four different interop partners. So for a regular device that's doing IPv6 core, that's two other hosts. So if you're building an operating system, you might test against you know, Windows or Linux operating system. And for routers, you would test against um, anything from the HPs to Brocades to Junipers to Cisco's. You have to choose two different partners from two different vendors. Um, we also, as part of the review process, have captures and result files. So every test case, the user submits captures, and that's so everything is transparent and open. Um, it is an on-the-wire test program, so there's no black box. Um, it is a black box. There's no, we don't go into the devices. We look for what's actually on the wire. Um, the test specifications that we create for the Ready logo, they are all open for public comment. They are available online. Um, if you go to the Ready logo site, we list them all. Um, we have lots of what I would call, I mentioned the logos we have. We also have experimental um, RFCs that sometimes people use for test specifications. Um, those include MLB, SIP, um, Ike V2. We have one for IPsec, but Ike V2, um, we left as experimental because there's just not enough, uh, or there weren't at the time enough uh, implementations. So, you know, it's always open for comment. People send comments on a regular basis, and so they're living documents that do get updated. Um, as part of the process, so we make sure we're up to date with the latest security or testing methodologies. Um, there's online application. You can apply. It includes all the information. Um, <clears throat> there's a usage agreement that you sign to make sure that you uh, adhere to all of the individual processes of the program. Um, the important part, a lot of people ask this question, is how do you use the logo? Um, as a product to test it, um, this one allows you to point to an individual stack, stack that got tested, but we also allow, there's lots of cases where that stack, that IPv6 stack can be used on multiple products. And we support um, a methodology for demonstrating this was the one that was tested, but these are all the ones that it applies to. And this is really important um, for people who have you know, large product lines. They want to make sure to demonstrate that all of them support IPv6 or that function. Um, if they obviously change the IPv6 stack, they should come back in and test. Um, in this case, we sort of trust the vendor in the market when it comes to these types of distinctions. Um, here's the important part of, you know, how do you use the Ready logo? So now you have all these devices that have collected the Ready logo. Why, why does this matter? Um, the Ready logo has, you know, over a thousand test cases. So if you're deploying IPv6, I think the question that you should be asking um, should be, hey, do you have an IPv6 ready logo? Um, what this basically ensures is that when you're buying a product, it will be able to turn on on a v6 network and do no damage. It won't harm it. It'll come up, it'll have v6. There might be extra things, you know, extra applications you want to make sure run over v6 for your network. But if you're requiring the ready logo, you're basically guaranteeing that the product can be turned on, on the network, will receive an IPv6 address, and can communicate, which is important. Um, this makes sure that products aren't broken. A newer one we have, I talked about earlier, was the CE router logo. This is, in particular, important for internet service providers. Um, that program was based on IPv6 world launch. Um, they were looking for ways to demonstrate uh, service providers at the time participating. We're looking for ways to get home gateways to demonstrate that they worked in v6 environments. Um, we currently we launched that one uh, 18 months ago now, so two Januarys ago. And that program has 16 routers and is continuing to grow. Um, also with the Ready logo, you know, I mentioned just asking for it. We've also had a lot of um, governments and other agencies um, use the Ready logo as the basis for their profiles or test programs. So a common one is for us is the U.S. government test program uses those test specifications. Um, there's also a new program in Malaysia. We've also worked closely with um, Anatel on their IPv6 requirements. And you know, part of the Ready Logo's job is we don't want people to have multiple ways to test IPv6. We want one method you know, so that the vendors don't have to jump through multiple hoops. Um, the programs might have different requirements being done in specific labs, not allowing self-testing are common. Um, a lot of people want to make sure that they're done in a much more constrained environment. Uh, that's OK. What we don't want is the Ready logo you know, to have different test cases that test the same functionality. So the Ready logo is very open to working with different forms and different areas to sort of, this is why we make our test 
documents public so that anybody can read them and comment to make sure that the re people are reusing the content as much as possible. Um, some of the pro programs take the Ready logo, just you just have to have it. Um, other ones, like the U.S. government program, for example, um, also Malaysia, require that the testing actually be done in an ISO-accredited lab. They don't allow self-testing in either of those programs. Um, that's sort of outside of the Ready Logo program. Our goal is to really just promote using of these. Um, the big part for people building equipment is then it makes sure that they can go to one place or you know, run one set of test cases and not have to worry about going to nine different places to um, work for nine different programs. Um, so this is sort of the harmonization between multiple uh, pro IPv6 testing programs that are, you know, want to aid in the deployment and make it as easy as possible. The Ready Logo wants to work with um, companies on something like that to collaborate with them. Um, here's our current, so this is a chart today, or as of, sorry, not as of today, as of November of 2016, um, <clears throat> of the current logos. As you can see, we've given out um, 1,400 logos, and you can see the chart. The core logos have been going up, obviously, as the deployment of IPv6 um, has happened. The number of logos has increased uh, pretty drastically. Our CE router program is very new. It actually now has more than DHCP. I think probably in the next year it'll have more than an IPsec um, logo. So obviously the core logo is the main logo that people use, just, you know, can you get IPv6 uh, turned on? Uh, that's all I had for individual slides. I don't know if people have any questions about any of the program or how they can use it um, to help them deploy IPv6. Okay, thank you, Tim. Eh, ¿Alguien tiene alguna pregunta? Eh, se les va a pedir que mejor lo hagan en inglés, porque como Tim está remotamente, sería difícil que él recibiera la, la traducción, okay. entonces mejor... So if you can ask in question in English. So good morning. We have, we have a question, okay? Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, Tim. Uh, how many time it takes for the manufacturer to have their logo? And another question is, do you have any web page to see uh, which manufacturer has already the logo? So uh, there's a link right here at the bottom that lists the approved um, list that lists all of the individual products. So I didn't talk about that enough. There is a public list on the IPv6 Ready website. So if you go to ipv6ready.org, there's a giant button for approved list. And that lists every device that we've ever tested that um, has the Ready logo. Um, it also, if you want to look at the individual details, it has the interop partners that it worked with to demonstrate who they worked with. There's an application that sits there that shows who they worked with. So every logo we give out lists the product and the version tested. Um, on that list. So a lot of people use that list as, you know, we won't purchase you or we won't buy you until you're on the Ready Logo list. Um, there's also the marketing logo. You know, when we originally started the program, it was a lot more people were very interested in putting that logo on products. Now it seems to be that most companies just use it to get on the list and then purchasers of IPv6 equipment um, go, just check the list. Okay, thank you, Tim. Any other question? No? No quieren ganarse algún premio? And you want to win a prize <laughs> if you ask something? No? Okay. Well, uh, thank you, Tim. And we appreciate your presentation. And, and uh, as I said, uh, we hope you, we can you can join us next time. So thank you yes, very much. Give love a to be applause. There. Yes, next time. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, thanks a lot.